So here are the leaves for this Dejarling. And um, it is supposed to be a TGFOP, which is a tippy golden flowery orange pico. And my notes say it's supposed to have the highest amount of tips, but I don't really see tips. So that is uh, confusing for me. Maybe you see them. I also see, you see right there, a stick or a stalk um, for a higher quality. I guess it's not the highest quality. Uh, you wouldn't expect stalks. Uh, but um, there's also not a consistency in the size of the leaves. You can see that one right there, how long it is, and then much shorter ones in there. So that leaf is not even rolled. Um, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be this way, but uh, that part was unexpected for me. But... Um, I don't know. It, we still like this one a lot. It's from Tea Source. It's from the Jungpana Second Flush Muscatel. And there's your TGFOP. And so um, here's the color. And uh, yeah, before I go to my screen, we'll just look at the rest of this over here. So here's uh, it in the clear glass, what it looks like. And we, we picked up on a hint of a, a red in the color of the liqueur. And there's what it looks like, the leaves, uh, after they're wet. So um, over here to my screen for the color, uh, in the color spectrum, we chose nutmeg because it's not really mahogany. Um, I wrote that it's brighter and happier. I think, I think it's definitely happy. Look at it. I think that's happy. I love the way the light is reflecting off of it. Uh, then the dark nutmeg, but it's kind of that color. Uh, but it's more like the bright, happy, the brown um on the spectrum scale but it does have more the red than nutmeg so we chose nutmeg and there's um what tgfop means but let's go back up to the top uh there's the name of it and my photo from t source today's date and so this is a dejarling um, and that is a town in India's West Bengal state in the Himalayan foothills. Fresh summer flush tea from the best performing estate in the district of Dejarling. So um, what I gathered from what I read online, because this tea, if you uh, search for it in Google, you'll find it in a lot of stores. So definitely uh, a... Um, uh, well-known estate uh, sold in, in many places and uh, I've got it from the website uh, this estate is located in a very rugged mountainous area near the town of Dejarling between 3,000 and 4,500 elevation now there it is on the map but I want to show you this this is cool. I learned this some time ago while playing. Here is uh, Google Maps. So if you just go to maps.google.com and then put uh, Jungpana, or however it's said, <laughs> however you say that, Jungpana, Pana Tea Garden, you'll find it on the map. See, it's right there. But I wanted to also know, uh, because it's a Dejarling, so it's supposed to be estates near Dejarling, so I actually did um, directions then. And so you see up here is the city of Dejarling. Darjeeling. 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 
I think I say it wrong, Darjeeling. <laughs> and uh, there's how close it is um, over here. See, it says it's a one hour and 50 minute drive or 41.9 kilometers. I wish that was in miles. But let me show you this, it gets even cooler. I'm gonna hit back. Um, okay, so there's uh, when you just put in the T estate, what you get, and there's the T estate. And I'm gonna click on satellite because I like this view because you can see the mountains. So you can see the road, you can see the building, and uh, you can see exactly where this estate is. And now I'm just using my mouse and I'm gonna scroll out. And when you get to about here, you can see uh, the, the foothill of the mountain that it's on. Isn't that cool? That's super cool. I love that. I love uh, learning about other parts of the world and seeing exactly where this tea is grown. And you see there's a, another tea garden um, on the other side of the mountain. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could probably uh, Google that and find out how to buy that tea uh, and compare it. So here we go. I'm going to uh, continue to zoom out, which is super cool. And as you, you do so, you, uh, let me come down a little bit. You begin to see, oh, look at that. Look at the mountains. See the white at the top? So it's uh, actually um, not only at the foot of a mountain or itself, but uh, it's at the foot of the large mountainous area. So that's super cool. I keep saying super cool. So see, you can see it. It's getting more prominent how it's at the base of those mountains. And then if you zo keep zooming on out, you can see exactly where in India that it is located. And there's China and Thailand, just to get, uh, and Bangladesh. I've had some tea from this Myanmar before. Um, and uh, there's Sri Lanka, because I like tea um, from Sri Lanka. But you see exactly where the jarlings uh, are from. Isn't that super cool? I think that's cool that I can do that. And I've been enjoying doing that with uh, various teas. So back to my tasting notes. On this one, I looked up the processing and uh, you know, Desjardins can be made into oolongs and green teas and whatever. Most of them are made into black teas. Um, and they all go through this same process. They have a withering where um, they remove moisture. They put them, and you, you can look this up online. They even have photos and, and, and videos on YouTube. They, put, they remove the moisture uh, in a long wooden box with strong air blown through them. So most of this is done by machine uh, and not so much by hand uh, that, that can meet a bigger demand. Um, then they roll the leaves for removing the remaining moisture using mechanical rollers to twist and press the leaves. Then they do the fermenting process to develop the natural aroma and flavor on thin and clean trays in a cool and humid environment. Then they do the drying process um, in the large mechanical dryers through a conveyor belt that continuously vibrates and takes the tea through a temperature range of 239 to 248 degrees. There's a typo, I'm gonna fix. And then they do sorting. So then they sort the different grades of the tea based on their size and pack them. So. I'm wondering exactly how that sorting process works because, uh, yeah, how do you get, I mean, because I got different size pieces as we saw. So um, I put uh, the aroma flavor, which we smelt it for a while. We definitely enjoy smelling teas. <laughs> we, 
and, and thinking. It, and it's so relaxing just sitting and smelling teas and trying to determine what they smell like. And we smell them dry and then we smell them wet. Um, so this tastes like the, or smells like the classic tea smell. And I've said this for other teas and I don't know how to describe the classic tea smell. I previously decided it was a malty, which would be the grain and starchy. But this is clearly muscatel. I mean, it says it on the package and I don't know if I know what muscatel smells like. Maybe that's what this classic tea smell is called. I'm not a professional. I'm in my learning phase. Um, I don't even know if I can get any muscat grapes, but um, we read online that they smell like wine. So a muscatel is uh, what you smell with, from dried muscat grapes. And so I went ahead and put the grain in starch because that's what I identified it as before. Um, the wet leaves have the same aroma, but is a pungent and strong smell. It was like, wow, when we first smelled it. Um, and we kept smelling it, trying to describe it. So I, I, if you know what classic tea tastes like, this is it. Um, I thought it, well, actually, we, we thought it was going to be more full body because that's what the website says. But we, I felt it was right in the middle, medium. Uh, a nice, a nice body actually, kind of also fitting right for the middle of the road color that it is. Uh, astringency, I put bright light, very nice. See, I some teas have are way too astringent, like a psalm teas, and I just can't drink them. This one was very nice, and it was bright, just like the color. I liked it. Um, Taste, again, I don't need to describe it. Uh, classic tea flavor, however you describe it, because I'm having trouble describing it. Uh, apparently muscatel and plum. I was trying, I know what a plum tastes like. I was trying to get that. Uh, I, maybe I got it. Um, juicy mouth watering for the finish. And I actually did get a little floral. I don't know what kind of flower, but I've, I've learned to identify floral in teas uh, in the last couple months. Um, and I did get that. Um, I have to tune in to, I love flowers. I don't smell them much because I don't like the floral taste. So I need to uh, start smelling my flowers in my yard more so I can pin that down on what kind of floral. But um, I love the tea gave it four and a half hearts i would buy it again <laughs> and my hubby even uh, liked it because he kept filling his cup before allowing me to do my taste testing <laughs> we would we would brew it and he'd take it before i could uh, set it up for this video <laughs> so uh, that's a good sign that we definitely will buy this one again but i didn't give it five hearts five hearts means i'll keep it on hand but there's several teas out there that are similar to this so I would probably uh, rotate it with those other teas and keep one of them on hand. Um, I went ahead and grabbed the map and said, see the mountains. And there's a couple of photos. You can definitely see um, the lack of tips. And you have as many sticks as you have tips. That's kind of the way I see it, almost. But it still didn't affect our rating. Uh, we still uh, had a I love it rating. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tasting and I'd love to hear uh, from you about this tea.